As we get closer to wrapping up Super Auto 2.0, we've got one last thing to check before we button everything up, the auxiliary injectors. Hey everybody, welcome back, and it's been a while since we've talked about the Super Auto. Things are finally starting to come together. We're getting all the parts. I think the last parts that I'm needing for the fuel system should be showing up today. But in the meantime, I have finished out the injector harness. And so the nice thing about it is I've got a little pack over here, a little Metro Pack unclip, that so I can install the harness on the manifold and then put the manifold in and then clip it into our micro squirt. But before we do any of that, we want to verify that we get good signal to all of our injectors. It's going to be easy because one of them is just a shared uh, power source for each leg. We've got leg uh, bank one and bank two, and then we are triggering a shared ground on the other one. So we're going to go into the micro squirt uh, software and put these in test injector test mode, pulse these, and then just use a test lamp to make sure that we're getting the signal out to our individual connectors. Because if for some reason, one of these was not firing, we wouldn't really have an easy way to know because we're using our primary fuel system whenever we're driving around. We're not going to you know, see the miss or the stumble that we often see whenever we have a bad injector. We're only using these under boost. We want to make sure that we've got good signal out to those. So uh, the easy thing that we're going to do first is probably just check out the common grounds on this stuff. We'll turn the key on, uh, connect our test light to power, and then come through here and touch all of our grounds and make sure all of our grounds are good. Now that we've got the power on, we should be able to test the hot side of these leads to ground, make sure that all of our hot leads are good. And the way that this thing's going to work is it's going to control uh, on the negative. It's going to supply ground to our injectors in a bank fire mode. And so we give it uh, hot all the time and then the ECU gives it the, the ground. Okay, there's our hot. There's our hot. So all eight hots are good to go. Now the next step is going to be to test the triggers. And as you can see, we're on the hot lead right now. If we plug into ground, we've got nothing because we're not making a signal through ground. We're going to have to use the micro squirt to do that. Let me get hooked up and we'll record the screen as we do that portion. So we're connected up here. We're going to go into our test mode for our injector output test mode. We're going to enable test mode here and we can do fuel pump off. We're not controlling the fuel pump. So our interval set up at 199 at 600 RPM, coil testing mode off, coil output to test A. We'll see. Oh, we don't care about coils. Here we go. Injectors, injector testing mode one. We're going to uh, do injector one, which is our A bank. And so we will bump our pulse width up to. Uh, we're at 199, so we'll on our period, so we'll go up to 100. That'll put us at about 50. And then, oh, doesn't like that one. So let's go up to 42, 43, and then we'll do uh, 5,000, eh, 500. Eh, let's do 5,000 injections. Okay, let's see if it works. Okay, so, oh, it still doesn't like this. Let's go 42, 42. And let's hit start. So we're going to check harness one, our bank one here. There we go. So that one's good. That one's good. That one's good. And that one's good. Okay, so bank one's good to go. Let's switch over to bank two. So if we come in here on the laptop, hit stop. We're going to change over. We got one bank. We're going to go over to injector two. We'll go ahead and start this one. You can see that it's pulsing on the display. Now, if we come in here with our test light, same ordeal, and we check our grounds, we should see a flashing light. There's one. There's two. There's three. And there's four. So that means our injectors are all wired out good. We should be good to go. Let's go ahead and pull the intake manifold off and install our harness. 
So the nice thing about doing it with the disconnect on the harness is we can kind of assemble this thing off the vehicle. And importantly, because I'm going to run part of this underneath the manifold, the wire loom on this stuff has an operational temp of almost 300 degrees, a melting point of 400. We're not going to have any issues with that. So the bank two stuff is actually going to feed through underneath right here. And then we can come in here and hook up bank one. May have made my heart a little bit too short in a couple spots. Nice thing about it is the injectors can rotate a little bit. So we can make it work. Okay, so there's the bank one side and we'll pull bank two through here. Let me turn it so you can actually see what we're doing here. Pull bank two through, plug it in. And there's no particular order, even though this thing is built to length, we are doing bank to bank firing on this. So each side fires independently of each other, but we are firing everything on one side. Not gonna be a big issue because whenever these are firing, we're gonna be up into boost. And so we're gonna have enough RPMs that we're not gonna have any puddling really on valves, things like that. The valves will be opening enough. We'll be over probably 3000 uh, RPM almost the entire time these things are injecting. And they're going to be pretty low. These are 42 pound injectors. They might be a little bit overkill, uh, but you know, if need be, we can always come in and find some 20 pounders or 24 pounders or something like that that can fit in here. But nice, clean uh, aesthetic whenever it's all said and done. If we look at this side, this will come right up, plug into the harness like so. And then if we need to pull this thing, we can just disconnect it right there, yank the manifold out. Be kind of the same ordeal we'll be coming off. Uh, I haven't decided how I'm doing the fuel lines yet. We're doing a tap off of the EFI line. Uh, so we will have the taps here. We've got two taps. I'm gonna run uh, one to one rail and the other one to the other rail most likely. Uh, but uh, I'll figure that as we go. Nice thing about it though, it'll be kind of the same situation where once this is all done, uh, all we'll have to do is disconnect from the uh, factory fuel rail connection, pop it off, and then this whole intake manifold will pull out pretty easily, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Okay, hopefully that gives you some insight as to how easy it is to check the injectors out using the Mega Squirt or Slash Micro Squirt, whatever, Tuner Studio. Pretty straightforward and nice tool to have. Allows us to verify everything beforehand to make sure we're good to go on that front so we're not hooking things up and having a cylinder run lean. On top of it, hopefully you like a little breakdown of the uh, design that I did on the Holly High Ram intake manifold to get things out of the way, keep it nice and clean, yet accessible and easy to work on. So I've got plenty to do around here. I'm going to get back to work. Make sure you stick around. If you haven't subscribed already, do that. Leave your comments, tips, suggestions. Check out the live show Thursday night, 8 Eastern. Check out the Patreon on the website, all that jazz, blah, 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 blah. If you stuck around this long, I know you're a true fan. ABT, thanks for stopping by the garage. Always be tuning. That was totally out of order, wasn't it? <sighs> Man, I got so much work to do.